In this video, I'm going to give a quick demonstration of the LCOV code coverage tool, which has support for both statement and branch coverage. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to clone this Git repository, which contains some code for the purposes of this demo. Uh, this Git repository is publicly accessible, so if you want to clone the repository and work through the demo on your own, you're welcome to do so. So first we clone the repository, and then the particular code example that I want to consider is in this particular subdirectory, so I'm going to change there. And if we look at the files that we have, you can see there's four files. We have two C++ source code files, bq.hpp and testq.cpp. We have our CMake list file, and we have another CMake commands file called codecoverage.cmake. If we look at the source code in a little bit more detail, essentially what we have in the bq.hpp source code file, this one here, we have the code for a simple bounded queue container. So the full details of the code are not really that important. It's essentially a container type. It allows you to you know, push elements into the container. You can pop elements from the container. You can query the number of elements in the container, check the maximum size since it's a bounded container. Not really very interesting. And then in this file, uh, testq.cpp, we essentially have a test framework for testing the code in the other file that we were just looking at. And this is using the catch2 um, test framework. I highly recommend it. It's a really great test framework for testing code. And so essentially this has all our test cases for our code in it. Now if we look at the files that are related to CMake, we have our cmakelist.txt file. And what we're doing in this that's kind of special beyond the normal usual stuff that we would have in a, in a cmakelist file, we're defining an option called enable coverage and by default it's false. And what this is, this just gives us the ability to turn on and off code coverage testing. So maybe by default we don't want to be doing code coverage testing. So what we're doing is we're defining this option that for example we can specify in the command line to CMake when we're doing a build and we're having a default to false. Uh, but if it is enabled, if we turn it to and set it to true for example on the command line when we invoke CMake, then this variable will be true and then the contents of this if is going to execute it. So in other words, if code coverage is enabled, there's some special stuff we need to do. Uh, in particular, we're going to set the build type to debug. It's probably highly desirable to have uh, debugging in debug uh, a debug type build enabled when you're doing code coverage. If you're doing really highly optimized code, it can sometimes make it difficult to kind of decipher which lines of code are executing because highly optimized code can kind of change around the ordering of of your uh, your code and makes things more difficult to understand. Um, then what we're doing is we're including this uh, code coverage.cmake file. It, we'll look at this in a moment but it has a whole bunch of uh, basically CMake code which defines some functions and things that we can invoke that help with uh, setting up code coverage. Uh, one of the functions that's defined in this code coverage.cmake is this function here. What this does is it just adds special options to the compiler which are necessary for enabling code coverage. So this allows us not to have to worry about what the specific options are. This particular uh, file here worries about that for us. Uh, the other things that we're doing special that if code coverage is enabled is we're invoking this function. This is also defined in the code coverage.cmake file. And what we're, we, what we're doing here is we're specifying the name of a target to be able to be built with CMake. So when you build, when you do a build with CMake, you're basically giving it either implicitly or explicitly a target to build. Here we're calling the target coverage. So if we build a coverage target, it's going to do code coverage. Uh, he, on this line here, we're specifying an executable program that should be run, like what it is that you have to run to do the code coverage. This is just the name of the executable that we're building. When we build our, our test program, it's going to produce an executable called test BQ, and this is the one that we want to run. Uh, because it's going to be placed in the binary directory of CMake, we need to specify the, the binary directory here. Uh, the next line is just specifying some options to the uh, code coverage tool that's being used, which is LCOV. Uh, in particular, we're, we're specifying that we want branch coverage to be enabled. By default, it's disabled, uh, but I want to enable it, so we're enabling it. Um, 
GenHTML is a command that's used to generate basically a nice human readable um, version of the code coverage information. It basically generates HTML files that you can load into a web browser and view. And this is just specifying some options for that. Uh, this is saying to provide a legend. It just provides some additional information in the HTML. And it's also saying we want to have branch coverage. And then lastly here, we're specifying any dependencies that this, this um, target has. So for example, we can't do code coverage until we've built the program that we want to actually do coverage of, which is this test BQ program. So we set it as a dependency. So if we try to build the coverage target, it knows it has to first build the test BQ. Otherwise, there's no code to actually run to uh, do code coverage on. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so uh, the reason why we don't need to put too much stuff in our CMake list file is because of the fact we're using this code coverage.cmake. It defines these functions, which greatly reduce the amount of boilerplate that's required to use LCOV. So if you're going to use LCOV, I highly recommend the use of this particular uh, CMake commands file. So let's look at this file now. I'm not going to go through it in detail. Um, this is the, the author of it, Lars Bilk, perhaps. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Um, it's not important to really go through and understand the details of what's going on here. Basically, what I recommend is just take this file, use it. It works quite well. So if we continue on here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the code. So when I invoke CMake to do the configuration phase of CMake, I'm going to specify the enable coverage option should be set to true. Basically, setting it to 1 is the same as setting it to true. So it's going to be enabled. And then I do my configure. And then I'm going to build the code. And in this case, I'm going to explicitly specify the target that I want to build instead of just using the default target. In particular, I want to build the coverage target. And because the car coverage target has a dependency on the actual target for the code, the, the, test, the test program, this is implicitly going to build the test program first and then do code coverage on it, which is what we would want. So if I run this, you're going to see it's going to start compiling my program. It's going to actually build the test BQ program, basically the program that has this name here. And this take a little bit of time. This code is uh, heavily templated, so it's a little bit slow to compile. And now it's, it's built the code, and it's actually running the code coverage tool. So this take a little bit of time as well. It's essentially running the program a few times and collecting some code coverage uh, statistics. Okay, so it's finished running it, and now it's generating the, the uh, code coverage data so in a for form that we can kind of understand as mere humans. And now at this point, it's telling me I can view this file here in my browser to see the results of the code coverage. So I'm going to open that file using Firefox. And there's a whole bunch of uh, code which is captured in this code coverage. I don't really care about this. A lot of this stuff is the C++ standard library related. I don't really care about that part. I only really care about the part that relates to my actual code that I wrote that I want to test. So I'm going to go here. And I'm not really interested in the test program itself, the coverage that it has. What I'm really interested in is how well it's covering my actual program or the, the code that I want to test, which is in the header file bqq.hpp. So I'm going to open up the code coverage results for this particular file. And if I go through here, uh, you can see what it's done is in each line of the source code, it's telling me, for example, how many times that line is executed. So this line of code here is executed five times. And things that are indicated in blue are, are lines of code that have actually um, been executed. Things that show up in red are lines of code that have never been executed. So this is trying to flag to you, hey, you've not tested this line of code. It's never been hit. You don't know what's going to happen necessarily if it's executed. So this is very nice because very quickly you can see parts of your code that have not got statement coverage. In other words, you've not actually executed those lines of code. Um, you can see from the results here that my, my test code gets fairly good statement coverage of the code. There's only two lines that are not hit, which is not too bad. Uh, but it, we can do better. We can actually add some more test cases to make sure that these cases get hit. Uh, the other thing that's showing here is because we've enabled branch coverage, every place in the code where there's a branch, 
you know, where you can, you know, the code can execution can go one way or the other. Like, for example, when we have an if, you can take the if or not take the if. So this corresponds to the two cases here. Here we can say that we see that we haven't actually taken the if. We've only taken one way for this branch, which is just skipping over and not going into the if. Uh, so this is what the red th thing here, the red minus sign is indicating is we haven't basically gone into the if yet, which is also confirmed by the fact that this statement has never been hit as well. The execution count for this line is zero. Um, so if we look at what's happening here, this is inside the push member for our class. So this looks like it's checking to see if the size of the queue has reached the maximum bound because it's a bounded queue. And in this case, we're throwing an exception to say the queue is full, but this has not been tested. So we should probably try pushing something onto the, onto the queue when the queue is full, just to, and to make sure that this line of code gets exercised. And then down here, we have a pop member function, which is just popping an element from the queue. It looks like this line of code is checking to see if the queue is empty, because if you try to pop from the queue and there's nothing to pop, this is an error situation and the code throws an exception, but this has never actually been, been tested. So probably what li we'd like to do is add a test case that when we pop an element from the, from the queue, we first make sure the queue is empty, so this line is going to execute. Anyway, so this is what the output looks like from this LCOV tool. It's quite, quite nice and easy to uh, parse visually. So I'm going to close the web browser here. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go back to the, uh, the, test, pr the test code and I'm going to go to the bottom of this file and I'm just going to add a few additional test cases and these test cases are intended to cover the the things that were missing before I'm going to add a test case to check what happens when we pop from an empty queue and I'm going to also try pushing to a full queue just so that we fully ex exercise the code so I'll save that and then go back and rebuild the code And this is going to rerun the coverage again after it's built the code. And again, this code's heavily templated. The, the catch uh, code, uh, sorry, the catch library for testing is quite heavily templated. So sometimes the code can be quite slow to compile, or just in general, C++ code that's heavily templated can sometimes be quite slow to compile. Anyway, so okay, it's compiled, and now it's running the code coverage tool, collecting the results, and then it's next it's going to generate the uh, the uh, HTML files for us and eventually when this finishes I'll show you the results We're almost done okay here we go so now I'll fire up Firefox and we'll look at the uh, code coverage results again I'm only interested in the coverage of my code that I've written that's that's the actual code that I'm testing so this is why I'm following this particular link I want to look at what's happening with respect to the code in bq.hpp so I'll click on that link this is what we were looking at before now you'll notice that I with the extra test cases that I've added now it's actually executing this line here um, it's actually fully executing all of the lines in my code also this line here which wasn't executing before is now being executed in one of my test cases so I have full statement coverage of this code I don't have full branch coverage though there's some branches that are not being taken and by the way when you look at the code you might say well how does this line here for example q dot pop this line here how does it have a branch uh, one thing that to be aware of is that because C++ has this language feature called exceptions exceptions can introduce control flow that's not explicitly there in the the code that you write but it's implicit due to exception handling so because of this it's sometimes very difficult to get a hundred percent branch coverage in C++ because there's a lot of extra control flow that's introduced by exception handling and sometimes it's very difficult in practice to get it to um, take all possible uh, outcomes for those branches Anyway, so that gives you some idea why there's some branches here that aren't covered. But at least the branches that we can sort of have more control over that don't relate to extra control flow for exception handling, these uh, branches have been covered. This if has been taken both ways. This if here has been taken both ways, like for true and false. This if has been taken in both, both ways. Um, this while loop... Yeah, I guess this while loop as well has been taken both ways. I'm not sure about this. This might be due to other exception handling. So I'll close the web browser here. And that basically concludes my demo of LCOV.